Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. The Miracle Woman, highly intelligent and dramatically skillful, revered for her charming personality and uniquely described as an epitome of an ideal woman. Rosalind Russell is one lady who displayed extreme confidence as a comic persona on set and in reality. You hardly will miss that natural elegance in her expression, but that surely is not all. A few distinguished characters made this legendary figure a model for contemporary women. How was Rosalind Russell's confidence damaged by the studios? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. In life, everyone has a role to play, but how they play their role is entirely their choice, as it determined whether they will succeed or fail. Rosalind Russell is among the very few women who decided to follow a part in life and walked through it not minding upsetting challenges. Her charisma is such that history will not forget her in a hurry, more so because she represented classical elegance in womanhood in terms of appearances with her very appealing vocals. Her attributes, of course, would not be complete without a strong reference to her ability to express herself verbally. Russell put her name in the good book with her excellent theatrical performances and is believed to have closed the gap filled by modern technology in her epoch by perfectly exploring the narrative and rhythmic prospect of dialogue in that era. She was also said to have invented a personal stage performance style that subsequent actors are now using as part of normal stage nuances. Her devotion to role-play is an interesting fit that made fans assume she remained that way in real-life appearance, or while briefly off the camera. Russell's simplicity as a performer is not just in her willingness to obey studio instruction, but in her modest dressing, which reflects in most of her public appearances. Russell will often go for that which depicts her as a refined and submissive woman, while also portraying that charming, busy but independent woman who is not bothered either by seductive frivolities or the sad mood that is often seen in her comedy. Russell came to the limelight after that historic outing in Auntie Mame and Gypsy. Critics believed that Russell stood out among women of her time, a fit she achieved within her 40-year on-screen and stage career. She practically paved the way for what contemporary women are doing today. But interestingly, hers came at a time that many women in American society were relegated to household activities. Her natural vocal power made her a preferred lead in most stage musicals. Is Russell just one of those fast-talking journalists, or are there other things that made her characterization as Hilde Johnson so special in the American entertainment industry? Perhaps yes owing to her outstanding Academy Award-winning nomination and other great compliments. This silent orator of an actor is also respected for her successful Broadway appearances that contributed to her fruitful career. Russell seems like a personality that would hold on to what she believes in, regardless of challenges, as seen in both her witty roles and her personal life, especially with her prolonged commitment to her husband, whom she spent over 35 years before her death do them part, despite their circumstantial meeting. Interestingly, this rare genius did not think she was really an accomplished fellow and perhaps needed the world to hear more about the things that were never said nor written about her and had decided to write about it herself. That may be the reason for her memoir, Life's a Banquet, in which she captured delightful moments of her life and career. Catherine Rosalind Russell rocked the industry as a choice comedic lead between the 1940s to the late 1960s. She was born on 4th of June 1907 in Waterbury, Connecticut, to James Edward and Clara A. Russell, an Irish-American Catholic household. Her parents strangely decided to call her the same name as the ship they once travelled in. She grew up as a Catholic faithful, attending all-girls Rosemont College in Rosemont, Pennsylvania, and Marymount College in Tarrytown, New York, and later to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. 
although her parents never knew she was grooming her acting skill as they felt she was obtaining knowledge as a teacher based on their choice. One could only imagine what will be in the mind of young Russell as she completes her training program at the institution. During the period, Russell appeared as a fashion model, including on many Broadway shows, even with strong objections from her parents. She worked briefly with a stock company for months at Saranac Lake, New York and Connecticut, and acted in summer stock before enlisting at Boston-based theatre company. Boston provided more opportunity as she stayed for a year or so, producing with the theatre group for Edward E. Clive. Still hungry for more representation, Russell took part in a separate show in New York known as the Garrick Gaieties, where she got singing training and developed a career in the opera, although subsequently halted for her inability to reach high notes. But sometime within the early 1930s, Russell left for Los Angeles, where she was rented as a temporal player for Universal Studios. Even though she had difficulty blending with other crew members at Universal, she did agree that her experience at the studio made a mess of her self-confidence and left her aggrieved about it. It did not deter her quest for exposure as Russell focused on Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and was lucky to vacate her Universal agreement favourably. Already depleted by poor treatment at the Universal Studios, Russell went for an MGM screen test, feeling distrustful. The reverse, however, was the case as she got a positive result on meeting MGM's Benny Tao and Ben Piazza, whom she felt were highly understanding, after which she was hired. Her first appearance with MGM was in Evil in Prentice in 1934. She gave her little best in that production and got noticed as a promising talent. She started appearing in several other comedy productions. Memories are still fresh of her performance in Forsaking All Others and Forza Crowd in 1934 and 38 respectively. She was also part of the second movie of Craig's Wife play of 1936 and the Citadel drama in 1938. Russell did not want anything to stop here at this stage as she gained a lot of prominences when she co-starred with Robert Young in the MGM theatre production titled West Point of the Air in 1935, making analysts recommend her after seeing her role as the other woman as an intelligent and deft handling to her scenes with Young. But that was not all, gaining the nickname the Miracle Woman, she quickly sprung to fame and soon became a standby for actress Myrna Loy, who was having many roles at the time. She did not quite appreciate her initial appearances in Hollywood as she was somewhat considered a sophisticated lady owing to her lifestyle. This Russell later voiced regrettably in an interview sometime in 1936. In her view, just because you are a woman in the industry is the greatest misfortune possible to a motion picture actress, adding that it has a way of confining the individual to playing feminine roles and the society did not help matters either. Hence, gorgeous appearances are often interpreted as sophistication that is viewed with suspicion in real life. So, entering the stage with beautiful outfits and charming manners, according to her, gets the most childlike drama lovers thinking immediately that giving you a hero position is wrong. I earnestly want to get away from this, I want to improve my career and professional life, and I am tired of being a clothes horse, she stated. When Russell had a discussion with director Frank Lloyd regarding the progress of her career image, the man who was supposed to solve her concern further adds to the injury by casting her as an affluent aristocrat in Under Two Flags in 1936, before she played nasty gossip Sylvia Fowler in The Women of 1939, an only female's comedy. The film was an instant success that boosted her career, thereby launching her reputation as a powerful comedienne. Russell continued to show her strength and talent as a comic character, and even more stronger when she appeared in the screwball comedy His Girl Friday in 1940. The movie, directed by Howard Hawks, saw Russell acting as a clever and excellent journalist Hildy Johnson, former wife of her newspaper editor Walter Burns, who was Cary Grant. Russell did excellently in the movie, even when it appeared that she was not among the top favoured actresses initially contacted for the role, as Howard was reported to have approached the likes of Catherine Hepburn, Claudette Colbert, Irene Dunn and Jean Arthur, 
among others, with an outright turndown from them before deciding to cast Russell as that fast-talking reporter. Russell came to know about this through a train ride to New York as she stumbled on an article in the New York Times discussing how she, Russell, was cast in a film that many actresses whose names were listed had turned down. This role got her so much prominence and set the pace for further exploits, as she sooner portrayed Mame Dennis in Auntie Mame in 1958 and Rose in Gypsy of 1962, all of which combined to place her among the greatest Golden Age Hollywood comedians of all time. Apart from her skillful comic actions, Russell got a very good outing as a dramatic character, particularly as a wealthy, gracious and model lady, most times acting as a professional woman like a judge, reporter and psychiatrist. She had lots of advantages playing these parts, as very few women were available for such roles at the time. And between the 1930s and early 1970s, before her death, Russell was able to create a wonderful career for herself with lots of accolades. When asked how she was able to have longevity in her profession, she noted that, Although she would appear as a classy and glamorous lady, she did not turn herself into an object and was dubbed Bachelor Girl for refusing to play the Hollywood romance with bigwigs. Recall that Russell made that Broadway hit with her role in a musical version of My Sister Eileen's film Wonderful Town in 1953, which got a Tony Award winning performance. Arguably her most outstanding career moment is her recurring performance as a lead character in the comedy Auntie Mame, a play that is a script from Patrick Dennis's novel, appearing also in its film version in 1958. Her fans will always remember that weird aunt who accommodated her orphaned nephew. Talking about it, Russell had hinted how some persons she could not identify, possibly her fans, would just come up to her and say, Hey, Auntie Mame! That incredible creativity saw her build for the musical version recording in 1966, but she turned it down because of her health. This unique lady added screenplay writing to her curriculum vitae when she scripted a story with the name C.A. McKnight for the film The Unguarded Moment in 1956 about harassment. Russell's screenwriting pen name, C.A. McKnight, also appeared in 1971 as she got recognised for scripting the novel the unexpected Mrs. Polyfax, which she also acted in and unfortunately became her last big screen action. Talking about Russell's classic contribution, she was recognised with Jean Hersholt Humanitarian Award in 1972, which was given in the form of an Oscar model. Among other notable nobilities is a Golden Plate Award of the American Academy of Achievement, five Golden Globe Awards, one Tony Award and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But the most interesting aspect of Russell would show in her personal lifestyle away from the fantasy world. On the 25th of October 1941, Russell got married to a Danish-American filmmaker, Frederick Brisson, and faithfully stood with her husband all through her ceremonious career before the inevitable hands of death came knocking on her door. Cary Grant, who was the best man at her wedding, was credited for connecting the two lovers. A story was told of how Brisson would often travel from England to the United States by ship, would listen to melodies from The Women Movie while in transit. The voices may have fascinated him that he decided to view the full movie, and after watching the film had fallen in love with Russell, Hook, Line and Sinker, that he told his associates that he'd either kill that girl or marry her. At the time Brisson was residing with Cary Grant at his hotel, and so as Grant was shooting his girl Friday, he quickly asked to be connected with Russell on hearing she was part of the film. Cary Grant, on his part, kept asking Russell each morning on set if she has met with Freddie Brisson, as a way of making her desire to meet Brisson. On a particular day, just before Russell went dancing as usual with Grant, she noticed that a strange face accompanied Grant to her room, as she watched him stand behind Grant. Grant had guiltily explained to her that the man behind is Freddie Brisson, the man he often asked her about. Then they left for dinner with Freddie in tow, and you must have guessed what the outcome was. Brisson didn't kill her, so he married Russell as he had promised. Their prolonged union produced a son, Carl Lance Brisson. Rosalind Russell, with her charming personality, would forever be remembered for her talkative and tireless nature, 
from racing to dance to clap of thunder or spraying perfume and alcohol on herself to appear drunk, she indeed acted her life the way she wanted, in films and in real time, adding in an epic statement, I never minded being a clown. Clowns make people laugh, and that's something I loved to do. The dislike Russell got at Second Level Universal, which saw her staying idle after rehearsing with potential co-stars, is the type that most famous actors and actresses had to overcome on their way to stardom. Fortunately, she was able to pull the rug on them and march ahead. Rosalind Russell died of breast cancer on the 28th of November 1976 at the age of 69, leaving behind her legacy husband and the natural gift of a son. It was said that about six months before her demise, Russell had met with First Lady Betty Ford, who survived after being infected with cancer at the White House, but unfortunately she could not make it, but her name would always be mentioned as a lady with a remarkable difference. According to her beloved Freddie Brisson, she had been born with the gift of laughter and the sense that the world was mad. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Rosalind Russell stood out among women of her time, just as Ingrid Bergman. How Ingrid Bergman was the pioneer of the women's rights in the 50s? Let's find out from this video.